than normal, but glad you could join us here for this month in a mixture of fall and winter sports this year as we'll get into both the men's and women's basketball team and uh, also have football, cross country, and volleyball. But we're going to start the show with soccer. Soccer wrapping up their season last week uh, in the conference tournament with a Lost to Augustana. We're joined by head coach Steve Bellis and uh, junior defender Jade Weller. Thank you for being here today. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for having us. And um, the season ending with that game against Augustana, first round of the conference tournament. Very exciting game. I ended up falling 2-1 to one in that one. I guess for both of you, if you can just kind of describe what the atmosphere was like in, in that game. I think we went into it having played them early on in the season and, and kind of dropped an egg a little bit and um, and lost 5-2. I think we went into it extremely confident and knowing that we, we probably owed them a better game. Um, so the atmosphere leading up to the game was great. The work rate from the players was great. We had a good week leading into it. We knew that we were playing a good team. It's on a grass field and, and that was that was our challenge, you know, getting used to the, um, the ball bobbles a little bit and getting used to that. So we, we got there early, got a practice in and and things went really well, to be honest. I mean, overall, I thought we, I mean, we in, if it was a regular game, we probably deserved a tie. We would yeah. have loved to have taken them into overtime and, um, and maybe got something from it in overtime. And it was a very unfortunate goal and just a bad ricochet that, that landed at the wrong person, I guess. But but overall, it was a good game. We, we thought we, uh, we definitely made up for our earlier game and competed well, changed our system a little bit. Tactically, we were better. Uh, but technically we were better as well, so it still stings a little bit. I know it's, yeah. only, a, it's only a week off, but yeah, I'm, I'm still still struggling with it a little bit. But what yeah. are you doing, Jade? The atmosphere, like going into the game, like knowing that we played them earlier and lost five to two, like that was our worst game of the season. So we went into it thinking like we have to give them a good game and we have to beat them. Like I went into it like we're gonna win, and I think like everyone else on the team thought that too. So just a positive attitude into it. And Steve, for you, um, you know, disappointing ending certainly with the loss, but you look at the year as a whole, winning record, making it to the conference tournament, um, a pretty high finish to, um, in terms of the overall league standings. What area were you most pleased with in terms of how the team played over the course of the year? Oh, wow, it's a tough mm-hmm. question. Yeah, we definitely saw some improvements from, from last year and obviously setting some records and, and winning more games than we'd done previously. Um, but I think in general, the, the depth of the squad we knew going into it was going to be better and stronger and unfortunately uh, we picked up a few injuries but we were able to to kind of bounce back from those better than we'd ever done before based on the depth of the squad. I think ultimately it was a um, healthy team chemistry I think as well um, and I think that's been getting better every year and, and I think that helped as well. So no, it was a, it was a great season, I'm very proud of the team. Um, obviously we'd still like to be playing today and, and I think that's the attitude and you can tell that both Jade and myself are still like, you know, we, we want to be playing and, and I think that attitude will be infectious as we continue. You mentioned you knew you had the depth coming in. Overall, how did the season kind of match up with your expectations preseason? It was about right, I think. I think I, mean, I knew that the freshmen that were coming in and the returning players would mesh pretty well, uh, but in terms of the, the amount of players that we had on the squad, I think we got it spot on. And Jade, for you, um, you know, kind of just looking at your overall numbers, listed as a defender, play back quite a bit, but also can contribute with the goal scoring, second on the team this year, you were first last year. How do you kind of balance knowing when to defend, when to attack, and, and having both those elements to your game? Um, well, going into, like, college, I was a very defensive player. So, like, coming into college, I think my teammates, and especially Steve, have opened up my offensive mindset. So when to go up is, like, like I'm gonna get like soccer technicality, but um, when to go up, like if I see space in front of me and my teammates up there, I'm gonna get up as fast as I can. Um, like if they're up on the opposite fi- side of the field, I'm gonna get up as fast as I can. And then the point of soccer is to score goals, so I'm gonna get up as much as I can. I know for me, uh, I, you know, just being more of a casual observer, probably one of the most exciting things for me to see is those longer free kicks, yeah. you know, it just <laughs> stands out, it's something that would be very hard to do, it would seem, just from an obser- observer. When did you kind of realize you could do that? You obviously have that role on this yeah. team. <laughs> <laughs> um, freshman year, I think I started taking the free kicks. I don't know, my favorite goal this season was when I scored off of one, like 45 yards out. So did you, did you ever practice that when you were younger, like before you got to college, or, or <laughs> kind of have a feeling yeah. that you could develop that skill? I actually like was terrible at long balls when I was younger. 
So like my aunt taught me how to actually kick one when I was probably 13, so. <laughs> and uh, when did, um, I guess, what kind of, did you, from your perspective, Steve mentioned you had some injuries earlier this mm -hmm. year, and w with the compact schedule and all the games, it's something you kind of know you're going to deal yeah. with to some extent, all teams do, but what do you think allowed the team, he mentioned the chemistry, but from your perspective, yeah. to overcome some of those injuries and still continue to have success? Um, well, like chemistry, I think of like everyone knows their role and everyone respects each other's roles. So um, we were able to like come out of it because the people who are usually in that sub role are ready to step up and be that starter and stuff like that. I don't know. And uh, w with the compact schedule, of course, that means you're yeah. going to have a very long off season too. And, mm -hmm. you know, you say right now you want to keep playing and have, yeah. have that energy coming off the season. How do you carry that momentum through what's going to be a very long off season and yeah. into next year? Well, it's going to be like another nine months off season until we start again. So, like, just thinking about the goals coming up for next season already, like, we expect to be like top four. We want to host our ho like first conference game. And then during the off season, we just got to work hard. Like I know um, Jordan Newsman, Rich White, our strength coaches will push us hard in the weight room. Steve will push us hard in the winter season. Like we're even scrimmaging a D1 school, which I think will be like a huge game and we should treat it like a conference game. So that passion will keep going through. And Steve, kind of beyond what Jay mentioned there, how do you sort of structure the schedule and things like that to kind of keep the players engaged throughout the course of that off season. Yeah, I think it's important that we take a, a, a couple of weeks off here and we all breathe a little bit and we all shake off the, the playoff blues. Um, I know that we're following, obviously, the, the teams that are still playing, Bemidji, um, Mankato, um, and obviously Augustana. So we'll follow those, but we'll take a breather. Uh, we've just kind of started to work on our off season schedule that'll focus on strength and conditioning, some agility work, some speed, and um, an ACL prevention program that we've been doing in the weight room. So we'll continue to focus on that, and we'll, we'll mix in some soccer stuff and keep the, the right level of, of soccer during the off-season as well. Any area you look at as kind of a point of emphasis for improvement or whatever to take that next step as you as you go into next year? I think so. I think we, we, we still have to score goals. We still have to score more goals. Um, I think ultimately that's how you win games. So we'll keep working on our offense, both technically and, and tactically. We'll improve, you know, whether it be set pieces and, and you know and, and bending balls, you know, banana like over walls, maybe, um, you know, that kind of stuff that we can do in the off season and really work on it. So, but we'll we'll stay on the uh, offensive track and and see if we can score some more goals. All right. Well, congratulations on the great season, and uh, thank you for joining me throughout the last couple of months, Steve. And uh, thank you for being here again today. No worries. Thanks a lot, Dan. Appreciate thank you. it. Yeah. So Steve Bellis and Jade Weller here on Golden Bear Insider as the soccer team wraps up the 2017 season. And we will be transitioning here into women's basketball. We'll have football, volleyball, cross country, and men's basketball coming up after that. The women's basketball team just getting their season started. They will be playing as part of the Central Region Challenge this weekend, Friday and Saturday in Kansas City in a few weeks of non-conference games before uh, starting the conference season the first weekend of December. So we're joined here by head coach Amanda Johnson, senior Kira Fredenberg. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having us. And uh, as I mentioned, the season getting going here this weekend, and uh, I guess haven't had any of the exhibition games, but a few weeks of practice, I'm sure. How have things been looking in practice so far? Pretty good. Uh, we played Bethel in a scrimmage, and then we just played in St. Thomas in the exhibition game. Um, practice has been going well. I think the girls are ready for the season to start happening as, as you practice, 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 and so they're ready for a game. But um, practice has been good. We have four new freshmen on the roster, so just them gelling with our upperclassmen. But right now, I mean, I like the looks of the team. I think um, we're battling. We're physical. Um, Kira's doing a great job leading the team. Um, she definitely doesn't up with much on the basketball court so she's pushing around the freshman which is good um, but yeah just getting ready for the games this weekend um, we play Pitt State and um, Harding which are gonna be great great games on the road so just getting their mindsets ready for some top you know division two basketball this weekend 
You mentioned the team wanting to get into game action. How do you kind of work maybe that last week or so to simulate the game environment as much as you can in practices? Yep. Well, we'll do game-like stuff. We're also going over a lot of scouting reports. So they have, you know, their scout of Pitt State. We're going to go player personnel. Um, you know, this is what Pitt, Pitt State does. Their offense, their defense type of a thing. So we'll always end practice with, um, you know, running over Pitt State, what we want to do for offense. So they just have that ready to go. Tomorrow's our last day of reviewing Pitt State, and then um, we'll have a light shooter on on Friday. But typically, we just um, will hand out their scouts so they know, you know, what they run and how we're gonna, what plays we're gonna run, um, and then you know, just get, get them up and down a little bit, just game-like situations. We try to do as well. And you mentioned having the four freshmen uh, mixing in the newcomers, a decent amount of the regulars from last year returning too. Mm -hmm. Have you felt pretty good with the way you've been able to blend those and sort of start to build the rotation? Yes, you know, it, it's hard at first with freshmen because it's just a different world, you know, college. But with seeing them play in the Bethel scrimmage and our exhibition, um, they've been playing really well. They are just really competitive. They're pushing the upperclassmen to work hard as well. And I think um, they are adjusting, they're adjusting well right now. And uh, Kira, for you, Amanda mentioned you kind of setting the tone out on the floor, and certainly your role in, in past years has kind of been on the defensive end, especially. How have you been working to sort of set the defensive identity of the team? Um, I think just by working hard in practice, and that goes for all the girls, not just myself. Um, what we do on the court during practice is going to reflect how we play in the game, and I think all of us have done a great job at pushing each other both defensively and offensively on the court. In terms of your off seasons, and you've had a, a few of them under your belt now here at Concordia, how do you kind of approach that in terms of are you looking to add a specific skill to your game? Do you just sort of work in general at, at improving all areas? What, what, how do you sort of approach that? Um, this previous off season, I did work uh, a lot on my offensive game because, like you said, I've had more of a defensive identity. But just honestly, whatever I can contribute to the team, whatever Banky tells me to do, I just do it. And however I can help, whatever she duty she needs me to do, whatever job needs to be done, just do what I can. <laughs> a lot of motivation, I'm sure, coming in as a senior now, going going into your last year here at Concordia. How do you sort of approach that of, of I'm sure, wanting to channel that and really have a good year, but at the same time, I'm, I'm sure you don't want to put too much pressure on yourself right up, right in the beginning, especially. Um, yeah, I guess I am just, I'm so excited to get on the court. I cannot wait. and. I think knowing it's my last year, I'm going to play each game, just knowing it's going to be one of my last and enjoy every minute that I uh, can on the court, both in practice and in games, any time I have with the, my teammates and my coaches. Amanda, you mentioned uh, Pitt State and Harding this first weekend, and certainly their traditional regional powers. Mm -hmm. um, and some other teams, of course, in the non-conference, you're going to get some home games as well. How did you feel those non-conference opponents would prepare you for the NSIC? Oh, they will prepare us. I mean, playing Pitt State and playing, you know, Harding's ranked number three right now in the nation, so they will definitely get us ready to go. Um, with that strength of schedule, I just hope that, you know, we have Augie Wayne our first opening weekend, and I hope with that level of competition that we'll be ready to go. Um, and I think, you know, it can only just help the girls with how physical they're going to be this upcoming weekend. And our goal is to split. I mean, we're, we're hoping to do that, and I think um, if we can do that, it will set us up good for the conference. And beyond, I certainly want to get out of the schedule with as many wins as possible. Where would you just kind of like to see the team be at going into the conference season as compared to kind of where they are right now going through the practices? You know, it just, I think starting out with just games against great teams, I think it just, it'll just be different going against each other in practice constantly. I love the fact that they're going to be going against two great regional teams. And I think um, it'll show it'll show the freshmen if they want to, you know, come in, step up. It'll show, you know, Kira. Um, I know she's going to rebound, but Kira's been working a little bit more offensively. Um, we want her to add a little bit more. And then, you know, with Lindsay Dore, we had a uh, post player. She was out last year, so just kind of see where she's at. Last year when she played Pitt State, she had 17 points right away. Um, we'll just see how she'll be coming back against them again this year. All right. Well, thank you both for being here. Good luck uh, getting the season started this weekend. Thanks thank for having you. us. Amanda Johnson and Kira Fredenberg here on Golden Bear Insider. And, of course, as in past years, we'll have all the home games available for the webcast. You can find those uh, through the portal right here at cspbears.com and certainly the full schedule available on the website as well. So we'll be joined by the football team now. Is the football team getting ready to wrap up the 2017 season on Saturday? They'll get the home game uh, coming up against Southwest Minnesota State. And uh, joined by head coach uh, Shannon Courier, sophomore running back Darnell Roll. Appreciate you both being here today. Thanks for having us. 
And uh, Coach, we'll start with you. Um, certainly the results haven't been what you would have wanted here the last few weeks. Uh, but, um, still looking for that second win here in this last week. But in all these games, you know, very few of them where you've been, uh, you know, where it's been a significant margin. Have you been pretty impressed with the continued fight of the team as you've gone through each week here? Yeah, there's a variety of things we're impressed with. You know, one is the fact that every week our guys come out with a lot of energy and we play hard. Um, we've certainly made a lot of improvements in our, in our, as our football team. Uh, we need to get the ball in the ends more frequently, obviously. But the games are competitive. Uh, we're right there within striking distance towards the other games. Uh, defensively, we're, we're making a lot of strides. We have four uh, true freshmen starting last week, and they played well. And there's just a lot of good young components to build the program on. Um, and then at the same time, our special teams play has been great. Uh, our coverage units have been really solid. Um, our protection has been great this year. Um, and, and I expect our offense will continue to get better, too. So. Uh, overall, definitely pleased, but obviously we're we're anxious to get another one here as we wrap up the season. When you go through and kind of analyze these these games in a little more detail, are you finding they're just kind of coming down to a couple plays, execution, things like that, or what what has kind of been the difference maybe down the stretch in a few of these close games? I would think offensively we just have had last two games penalties that have taken points off the board, which has hurt. We haven't been as productive in the red zone as we like like or need to be. Um, you know, we haven't. Uh, just been real sharp down there with some mistakes made. Uh, we've been able to move the football, you know, in all of our games really, but we really have to work on, and we have been working on finishing off drives and, you know, getting the points. Um, and now it's almost like there's a little pressure. You know, people feel a little pressure when we get down there, but we just uh, have to keep trusting what we're doing and, and just make our play do our job and uh, hopefully get guys like Bam here into the end zone a few more times. You mentioned the freshmen you have playing, and one of them certainly stood out in a big way uh, last week with Chris Garrett against Augustana, got named the Defensive Player of the Week for the conference. What's just sort of the importance to the program and to him certainly individually to see one of your players get recognized in that way? Well, in the two years that I've been here now, um, it's the first time we've had an offense or defense player recognized as a, as a Player of the Week. Um, I believe maybe Marcus had one last year, but um, especially in the defense line. The defense and O-line is where it starts, and we're going to continue to emphasize those aspects in our recruitment uh, efforts. And we, we have a lot of quality young D linemen coming to visit here as we get into our official visits. But uh, that's where it all starts and begins. And when you have a young player like him as a defensive end making the plays he's making, I mean, right now he's playing as well as anybody in the league. Um, I think he has six and a half or eight and a half sacks, you know, in the six games he's played. Uh, he's real important, you know, and I think we have a lot of, like I said, major pieces to the puzzle right here. We just have to keep adding um, you know, some, some different components, and we're going to be real, real close to being competitive um, as we keep rolling. And for Chris specifically, obviously a lot of talent to put up numbers like that, but what about, you know, him just individually has allowed him to have so much success so quickly? I mean, he's just big and explosive, and his game's about big, fast, explosive players, and that's what he is. I mean, he's a 6'4", 6'5", 220-pound skinny guy right now, uh, but very fast, explosive, plays at a different level and speed that, you know, the average player plays with. And uh, he can tackle. He's relentless. Um, he's a great young man in terms of his motivation. Strong Christian, Christian you know, spiritual leader force as well. Um, and he's, he's, you know, yesterday he asked coaches, uh, "How can I get better?" You know, so that after a great game like that, when he's a NSIC Player of the Week, to have the, um, you know, the maturity to ask, "How can he improve?" That just to me defines who he is, and, and I'm excited about his future for sure. And Darnell, for you, is the uh, primary running back this year. Certainly contributed last year in sort of a more secondary role. How did you prepare going into the season uh, to get those extra carries and, and take on the primary role in the backfield? Um, last year, being behind two senior running backs, you know, that made me really want – and I learned a lot from them too. But coming into spring and summer, you know, I had to make a statement. You know, I, had, I knew competition was coming in, so I had to be ready for it. Getting a lot of work this year, but still only a sophomore, going to have a couple years left. What have you learned this year from getting all those carries and being such a focal point of the offense? Um, one thing I learned was make the most of your opportunity. You know, I had a few opportunities last game, a few games before to run the ball, and I just got to make the most of it. Have you noticed a, a difference in the way teams are maybe defending you at the line as you've established yourself over the course of the year? Um, I guess. I guess they focal point on me. Well, I was not. I was saying like not hit me low, because it's just I'm gonna keep running, basically. But 
And certainly you're going to have more time to think about this as you get into the off season, and, you know, we're focused on this season right now. But anything you've sort of seen already that you, you can sort of look to add over over the winter and, and spring that, you know, will help you going forward into future years? Um, Yeah, like things to work on, as in speed, you know, size. That's what everything, everybody's trying to strive for, get bigger, faster, stronger. Mm-hmm. And uh, what do you, just for the team, you know, you have this game coming up against Southwest Minnesota State. We mentioned how you've been in a lot in a lot of games, haven't quite been able to get over the hump here recently. What would the importance be to the team of of getting that win and going into the off season and kind of being able to carry that forward? Um, it'll just it'll just tell us like we're not the last team in the South Division. It'll send the seniors off on a good note and um, have momentum going into the spring. And, and coach, kind of with that in mind, what's been your message to the team this week? Well, again, we, we're just striving for improvement every week. You know, we don't, uh, we can't focus really on the other teams are playing. They're going to be on the schedule regardless. But we're really focused on, you know, doing our job. You know, what's important now, and uh, just trying to elevate our game and have personal bests. And 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 I guess this continuous improvement from one week to the next. Um, and, and Bam's more valuable than just as a running back. He's one of our top leaders as a sophomore too. It really uh, brings a lot of energy to our program. And and part of the reason we have energy every every week on Saturday is, is the things that he does as a leader. Um, so we're, you know, just to throw that in there about him. Uh, but, you know, our focus is on just getting better, you know, doing what we're supposed to be doing. And we think if we can play better than we have been playing, which we expect to do, you know, we can be victorious here this, this last game. All right, well, good luck coming up on Saturday. And I uh, appreciate you joining me here throughout the season. Well, thanks for your time. Thanks. Appreciate your time. Shannon Courier and Darnell Roll here on Golden Bear Insider as the football team gets ready to wrap up the 2017 season here on Saturday, the matchup at 1 o'clock, and that game did move back to campus, and it was on the schedule originally to be played at Hamlin, but it will be right here at Seafoam Stadium, uh, 1 o'clock on Saturday, and of course we will have the webcast for you through cspbears.com, so you can check that out Saturday afternoon. So continuing on with the fall sports here, and we're going to talk volleyball now as the volleyball team getting into their final weekend of the regular season here in conference play uh ready to head out on the road and head coach brady starkey and brooklyn lewis here thank you for joining me today thanks for having us and uh brady for you first a very exciting uh, matchup last friday against northern state great atmosphere here against uh, another top team dropping the first two sets you were able to come back and win it in five what was kind of the the key to the comeback i guess and, and being able to get that win well, I mean, I think it was kind of weather in the storm. I mean, they were playing really solid volleyball. Um, you know, they were really, really kind of playing flawless, to be honest. Um, and we were like, all right, we just need them to maybe slow down a little bit and then kind of us to pick up our game. Um, and then we kind of battled through a third game right there where uh, where I thought they were still playing well, but then we kind of matched, I think, what they were playing and snuck out one. Um, and then as the game kind of wore on, I thought that they got a little less aggressive and we got more aggressive. and and kind of turned the tables on them a little bit. So just kind of shifted the momentum a little bit and uh, just really proud of our girls that they uh, kept fighting and didn't give up. When you get a match like that first uh, one of the weekend, you know you're going to have to get right back out there and, and compete again. Were you pretty happy with the way the team responded and avoided a, a letdown against Minnesota State Moorhead? Yeah, they really did a good job of uh, you know getting back to square one right off the bat and coming out and playing well against uh, – uh, on Moorhead, and uh, and we were pretty fired up about that because we were. Uh, I think we were concerned that that could be that could happen. I mean, that happens a lot when when you got big matches like that. But uh, I think that they had their kind of eyes on what they wanted to accomplish that weekend, and uh, did a good job of coming out and executing. And in, in seeing you guys specifically in the home matches, it does seem like you've kind of gotten to another level offensively over the past month or so. Has that been your impression? or And if, if so, how, when did you kind of see the team starting to gel a little bit on the offensive end? Um, you know, I think that it's still a work in progress, to be honest. I mean, I feel like that uh, – I feel like – at times we're flowing, but at times we're, you know, like at times we're really going, but then we're still having those times where we're, where we're making a lot of errors and stuff like that. Um, you know, if we can get ourselves to even just ratchet it up just another level, I think we'd be really tough to stop because, uh, because at times we've shown that we can really be undefendable defensively at times. So, I mean, we've just got to keep kind of plugging along and hopefully that clicks here and we bring it to even another level because I mean I think it's improved but I still think we have more in the tank. 
And of course, you always want to have that defensive identity. You're anchored by a, a freshman this year and Tori Hansen at the libero spot. What have you kind of seen from her this year and what she's been able to bring into that important position as just a freshman? Well, I think that she is pretty calm for a freshman. I mean, and she also just brings a, a big level of fight. She's really a competitive kid. Um, and she just scraps. I mean, she's just one of those kids that is going to get back there and compete. And that's really, I feel like, has helped us a lot defensively. I mean, because I think that once one kid starts really playing defense well, others will follow. Um, you know, but it's, it hasn't been just her. You know, Aaron Follard, I think, has done a great job back there defensively. I think that uh, Hope Schiller, too, as well, you know, has really kind of solidified our core defensively. I think that um, I still think we can improve, and uh, and but it's been fun to see. It's been fun to see uh, Tori kind of kind of fight in that position for us. So. And uh, Brooklyn, for you, kind of going back to that Northern State matchup, and there have been a couple like that at home here this year. Augustana, one comes to mind, too, but a real – High level match with a with a great atmosphere in here. You've certainly been a part of those at, at home before, but in an expanded role this year. What was it just kind of like uh, out on the court being a part of a match like that? Oh, it was really exciting. I mean, finally getting to play personally for me this year. It's been just make making every opportunity count, and um, yeah, it was just our defense sets the tone really for our team. So they've been playing so well. So make. Making plays offensively is a lot easier. Certainly one of the big storylines kind of coming into this year was how many players you were going to have like yourself sort of in those expanded roles from a year ago after after graduating a lot of seniors last year. How do you feel the team's been able to come together on the court? Certainly you'd work together in practice maybe in previous years, but mm -hmm. kind of adjusting to each other in, in those new roles. Oh, yeah. It was a long preseason, I would say, of trying to, you know, step up in those ways where every player had a different role that they were filling. So... Yeah, it's definitely gotten better as the season's gone on. So, and Talk about the offense clicking a little bit. Certainly for you, you had the, the string recently of four straight matches, I believe it was, where you had a career high in kills and uh, really kind of establishing a role there on the outside as a hitter. Is there anything specific that started to click for you out, out on the floor? You've been pretty consistent, of course, throughout the whole year, but with those high kill numbers over the, those few matches. Um, personally, I would say it's a confidence level that's kind of been building throughout the season. But then also our defense, like I said, they're playing unreal. And then Elmo is making great sets and decisions. And then my middle blocker is pulling my second blocker out of the way. So having only one blocker up there is it's pretty nice. And certainly you like to get those one-on-one -on -one matchups. I'm sure teams shading a little more of the defense to you out there at times uh, when you're when you're putting up those big kill numbers. And I imagine that's something you, you dealt with when you were younger before Concordia, playing in high school and on other levels. Do you kind of flash back to that? Or what, what do you sort of look to to get when you see that increased attention to keep having success? Um, I just kind of see it as a challenge. I don't know, going at me personally, I just it makes it even more fun to be like, well, let's let me beat you this way then if you're gonna put this player in my in my way so and Brady as I mentioned uh, before we get started here you get the last weekend of the conference season here this weekend traveling to uh, might not stay in Mary play Mary first but um what are you just sort of looking to see from the team this weekend you know you're gonna be in the conference tournament in some capacity but to finish the regular season on a, on a high note um, I think just really hoping folk we focus on just our side of the net um, and just really kind of controlling what we can control because um, we can dictate, you know, how we're going to play and stuff like that in that situation. So, I mean, um, hopefully that our girls just focus on our own stuff. So, All right. Well, thank you both for being here today. Good luck this weekend. Thank All right. You. Thanks for having us. Brady Starkey and Brooklyn Lewis here on Golden Bear Insider Volleyball Team. Again, playing those matches on the road this weekend. And have at least one home match as part of the conference tournament. Uh, will be a week from Wednesday. And then if they do, they wrapped up a share of the conference title uh, last weekend. If they get that individually with a win over the weekend and are that number one seed possibility, they'll have more matches at home if they win on Wednesday. But certainly any home matches as well for volleyball will be available here through CSPBears.com. And now with the cross-country team coming in, cross-country team wrapping up a very successful season last weekend at the regional meet, continuing to uh, set some new records for the program. So we're joined by head coach Jonathan Breitbarth, also sophomore Peyton Holmes. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having us. And uh, coach, for you to, um, uh, or for you to start, I guess, we mentioned what took place over the conference and the regional meets. And we've kind of been 
talking about that throughout the season, some of the new highs this program, some of the runners have hit. Um, how gratifying was that for you to see them continue to do that in the in the most important meets of the year and, and kind of deliver when it when it really counts at the end of the season? Yeah, you know that's a that's a great question, and and um, they definitely did uh, put forth the the performance that we have been seeing in terms of the the process they've been going through in in practice, their summer training, um, and and like you said, there's there's a number of uh, number of statistics and 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 new heights that that we reached, uh, um, but you always kind of kind of stay to your core and and we're. Um, we're, we're blessed that the, the team continues to grow in terms of a uh, number of athletes, the um, impact we're able to have through our community service when we do our overnight trips, um, and just the continued improvement in practice as well. Um, the practices have never gone, gone better in terms of uh, uh, competitiveness and, and quality of workouts, and, and what we saw at conference and regionals um, uh, is what we what we thought we saw, and and I really think as a coach, the the scary part is is the and the exciting part is what we've seen in practice uh, leads us to believe there's there's even more ahead of us uh, coming down coming down the road. And certainly the performance that really stood out from regions, uh, Caleb Troy getting an all region honor for for his performance, first time uh, that that's happened for your program. Is that something you knew kind of you know he was he was very solid last year and in years past? Did you kind of Figure that's something he might be able to do this year, a goal he had set, or did, or was it really speak to his improvement that he was able to do that? You know, we um, we had a good season, uh, 2016 season for for where we had been. We had taken steps forward, but when the um, when things really kind of um, started to be illuminated in terms of we've got something really good going here is is the indoor conference championships, and Caleb was able to. Um, to place at the indoor conference championships, and from that point on, um, with the workouts he had been doing with the other guys and and such, um, what what th the performance he had on on Saturday and, and being all region, um, really that's that's been coming now for for the last eight nine months, and and the year that the, the calendar year of 2017 is as kind of um, you know we, indoor championships were uh, in February and and now in November. Uh, we could kind of see that coming even for the last uh, eight, nine months. We have uh, Peyton here. He had a great race, mentioned Caleb. Uh, on the women's side as well, though, some very strong performances. Uh, can you just sort of speak to some of the standouts on the women's side throughout the season and then specifically in, the, in that regional meet? So uh, our ladies um, are a, a group that continues to, continues to grow, and, and I think um, we're looking forward to indoor and outdoor um, for kind of having those – those those steps the way the Caleb and the guys had at uh, in track last year. Carl Lindbergh um, really uh, did exceptionally well for a for a first year runner um, in our conference in our very competitive conference and in our region. Um, we had uh, some individuals, some veterans step up a little bit. Courtney Ramsey uh, had a significant season. I feel like uh, Lydia Carr, um, Ruth Lindbergh had. Had a, had a really good season. Um, she she was impacted a little bit by uh, uh, just a cold on on Saturday. So um, that performance wasn't indicative of, of what she had been doing. She she had been been doing some good things. So just as a, as a group um, of ladies, they they're they're working together. Um, they're figuring out that you need to be solution oriented when you go out there and, and compete and that there are going to be challenges that you didn't expect and and I really I really like the the composure they have when they when they compete and and the uh, drive they have when we're when we're doing workouts and uh, Peyton for you he shaved a ton of time off your regional performance from last year I want to say about 35 to 40 seconds what uh what was just sort of the difference for you this year? I'm sure a, a lot easier to prepare having a year under your belt and, and knowing what to expect. I think I was just a more mature runner this year. I mean, last cross season I came in not knowing what, where I was at, what I wanted to do, and then in between cross country and indoor track last year I made some improvements and I kind of got injured at the end of outdoor track season, so I got a little late start, but I was just able to build up and more experience uh, and now coming to the regional meet I was able to cut a lot of time off even on a more tougher course than last year.
It's certainly it's it's always helpful to athletes from that freshman to sophomore year. You learn about performing at the college level. For you, was it sort of physical in terms of learning how to train and, and approach that, or was it almost a, a mental aspect of too of just kind of knowing how to get yourself ready for these races? I think it was more like physical. Like when I came in, I was not in high school. I didn't run a lot of miles. I was like more on like a speed base. And then when I came in, Jamie JB had me mo more miles, and I was able to really cut a lot of time off when I uh, was doing more miles and it caused me to do faster workouts with, which helped me in the race. I'm sure it's been beneficial to see your teammates performing well also. Have you guys kind of been able to feed off each other's success and, and push each other out there on the course? Oh yeah, um, definitely. If It's really hard to do it on your own so if you have like teammates in practice always pushing you to get faster you're gonna do better in the race especially when you see them in the race you guys work together try to keep up with each other and finish as high as possible. Uh, we talked about the success the program has had, and you guys are all basically sophomores, juniors, uh, a few freshmen as well, so you're going to be coming back and, and competing again next year. i got to imagine there's a pretty high level of excitement for you to go into track. Certainly most of you run track, but then uh, also going into cross country next year and, and trying to reach even higher. Oh, yeah. Um, we are really excited. We feel like this year was just a huge building block that we needed. We're hoping to put put some strides and break more records next year. We're already excited for it. And JB, for you, um, just talking about this team, and I'm, I'm sure it's it's meant a lot to you what they've been able to do with the program. What would you want people to know about them, even just beyond you know some of the things they can see on the website, times, and, and things like that about uh, these runners as people and what, they, what they've meant to your program this year? Yeah, that's a that's a great question, and I really um, think they they really fit uh, Concordia. Um, they are individuals who care for each other, who um, recognize that balance between academics and athletics. Um, they understand uh, process and, and putting in the work to be able to, to be successful, and they want to do it uh, want to do it together. And, and um, it uh, yeah, it's it doesn't feel like the the season's ended because, like you said, they're mostly freshmen, sophomores, and juniors. And this is just this is just part of. Uh, Part of uh, our, our our current timeline, and and it's not uh, it's not an ending place. It's more of a kind of check where we're at, and and uh, retool and and reengage into um, having something even more successful uh, next year. All right. Well, thank you both for being here today. Congratulations on the season. Thank you. Jonathan Breitbarth and Peyton Holmes here today for Golden Bear Insider. As the cross country team wraps up the. 2017 campaign and we are going to wrap up the show talking about the men's basketball team they will be getting their season started this weekend taking part in the arkansas tech tournament down uh, in monticello arkansas that'll be this weekend on friday and saturday so we're joined by joey james and avon ward appreciate you being here today Hey, man, it's good to be back. It's been a while. It's been quite a while, and uh, good to be talking basketball again. Excited for that. But um, it got out on the court, I guess, last week, had the exhibition against the University of Minnesota, and certainly a high-level Division One team. Uh, you know, you're going to be seeing some very talented players there. What did you take out of that matchup against the <laughs> University of Minnesota? Well, first off, I think it's hard to gauge uh, where our team is at against such a quality basketball team in the Gophers. And... Um, Let's just face it, they're 14th in the country. They're really, really good. But I thought we, we took some good things away from that uh, from that game. I thought some things that we obviously could work on uh, was our transition defensive rebounding. But again, it, against a team like that, they, uh, they're really talented, man. And, uh, but, but I thought our guys handled themselves well. And I thought the big thing was that I just wanted us to, to, uh, to make sure that we stay together in that game and make sure that we didn't break, so to speak, uh, just because um, in, in, a, in a situation like that, they're so good that before you know it, it's a 10-point game to a 30-point game to a 40. And so I thought our guys mentally handled it well. And so we, we took a positive out of that, even though obviously we don't want to lose. We hate to lose. But um, they stuck together, and I was proud of that. In addition to the Gophers, not another team quite on their level, but you're going to be playing three more Division One mm -hmm. teams uh, next weekend in Milwaukee. So four total games against teams at that level. What was kind of the, the decision-making there, scheduling that and showing your team that, that high level before you get into the conference Yeah, you season? know, I always try to challenge our guys. And, and, you know, I know a year ago we were one of the youngest Division II teams in the country, but we've, we, we've grown up a little bit now. 
and I think it prepares us for our conference slate, which I think is, is one of the toughest in the country. Um, but, you know, it's a great opportunity for these guys. It's the experience. I'm trying to give these guys the ultimate experience at the college level, and uh, these guys want to play those games, you know. Um, I think they love all the games that we're going to play in, but for, for whatever reason, uh, it's, it's just a, a different mindset going into those. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's uh, – um, those, are, those are good guarantee games, uh, you know, as far as – fundraising-wise and things of that nature. But at the end of the day, man, it's about it's about the experience and, and figuring out a way how can we get better and why not go in there and try to compete with those teams and see if we can't pull one off. I got to imagine you can learn a lot, too, just kind of what players are able to thrive in that type of environment against, against those type of players. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I told our guys, I said, listen, Minnesota's going to do some things that are going to expose us. I, I knew that uh, because they were bigger, more athletic, their size and everything like that, uh, their speed. Um, but at the end of the day, can – can we be tougher? Can we be smarter? Can can we execute and do the things that that we got to improve on? You know, and and again, I, I worry more about our team than the opponents. You know, um, at the end of the day. And just sort of looking at the roster in general, you have a decent amount of newcomers coming in with freshmen and transfers. A player like Avon, who was on the roster last year but didn't uh, get into a game. And uh, what do you, what are some of those newcomers? Do you think are going to bring to the table? And have you been pretty happy with the way the chemistry's developed so yeah. far? Yeah. Um, the one thing with this group, I feel like they have a chip on their shoulder. They have something to prove, which they do. Uh, with seven returners coming back, these guys, you know, I told them before, they, they, ate, they ate the humbling pie, man. You know, if you weren't humble from a year ago, uh, you're not human. And so uh, it's, it's putting the work on the court and getting better. But we've got a, you know, he set out last year, and, and this guy right here has the potential to, uh, to be a, a very good score for us. Um, but I got to remind them all the time, you know, just understanding patience, taking care of the ball, you know, taking the right shots and things of that nature. But, um, but uh, he has all kinds of ability to do that for us. Um, and then we got, uh, you know, Evan Wiesenberg, who transferred North Dakota State. Uh, reminds me a lot of Shea Manley that we had a couple years ago, just super solid, uh, just understands the game. Uh, he'll help us out in a lot of different ways. And a lot of our guys came back bigger and stronger. Um, we also added the, the freshman Cody Carlson. I think people are going to be uh, a little surprised about. Uh, he oozes with ability, but he's got a long ways to go. He's still a freshman. He makes mistakes out there, uh, and we just got to clean some of that stuff up. But I'm excited about the guys that we brought in, um, along with uh, with the returners. You know, um, so it, it uh, it's going to be a great challenge. And Avon, certainly there's no substitute for playing, and I'm sure you wanted to be out there last year. But um, what, what were you kind of able to learn just watching and, and observing in some of those games that you can take forward now when you when you get into conference games uh, this year? Uh, a lot about patience, man. It's a, it, the game is all about patience. We just got to – and pace. We just got to stick together and roll with each other, man, and just stick – overall, just stick together. That's, that's, our, that's our big uh, – our main issue right now is just sticking together and playing hard and finishing the game. We, we got to finish the games strong, start them strong and finish them strong. Is that patience even more of a challenge for you after sitting out a year? I'm sure you really you, you want to get off to a good start and kind of hit the ground running this year, but knowing to just kind of pace yourself. It definitely is a challenge for me because, like you said, like you said, it, we got a chip on our shoulder, man, and I want to show the world what not what I'm capable of, but what just our team is, you know, what my team is. And being able to just go at the pace that I that I like to go at that I'm used to back from high school is just it's totally different from the pace now. So my patience from then and there is just is a lot different, and it it it's it's a it's a learning experience definitely. And from your perspective, you know, last year is no way around it. I'm sure it didn't go the way you guys wanted to. But you, you had that win late in the year, played Minnesota State Moorhead, one of the top teams in the conference. Did that sort of help? It was late in the season, a, a top team in the league to know you had that in you, it was there, and, and you can hopefully get that out more more now this year? Yeah. Even with me not playing, I'm, uh, it definitely helped us a lot, with, especially with confidence, just to know that we didn't, we didn't play too well during the regular season. And once we got to that point that, Hey, we can really do this. You know, what I'm saying we got to. We when, when we actually beat them, it was just like we can, yeah we can actually do this. There's no there's no team that can really stop us if we actually play together and do what we're supposed to do. 
And uh, Joey, for you, got to look at a little bit at some of the you know the starters, the rotation, and that Gopher game which you had there. Are you, are you feeling pretty comfortable with the way that's coming together and uh, what what the roles are going to be for this year? Yeah, I think uh, the other day um, normally I allow our guys to kind of play through their roles, uh, but the other day I, I basically told guys what my expectations of each one of them was as a as a, as an individual uh, in a team meeting, um, but. The one thing I like about this group is that it doesn't really matter who we start uh, because uh, I, I think our depth is going to be um, the catalyst of our team this year. And so um, some guys are, that, that's going to have it going some nights are going to play more minutes. And, uh, and hopefully uh, the next night maybe, uh, maybe their, their, their teammate that's in the same position uh, that, that they're battling with um, end up, you know, maybe he, he steps up for them when he's having an off night and he's playing, he's playing well. So. Um, but no, I, I like where we're at right now in, in terms of uh, uh, the 11 guys that we have on this roster. And it's, and it's a short roster, uh, but uh, it's been a fun group to work with, though. I talked a little bit about some of the D1 games. You've got the mm -hmm. two games, first regular season games here this weekend coming up down in Arkansas. If you can just uh, tell us a little bit about the teams you're going to be seeing down there and, and what the challenge will be in those Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we got a lot of road games coming up. I, we only got a couple home games. Um, and, and so... Again, uh, I, I think I got to get better at scheduling. Uh, next year, I think it unfolds for us a little bit more. But uh, this weekend, we're going against Monticello and Tech. Uh, Monticello is 21st in the country, I believe. They're picked to win that league. Arkansas Tech is right behind them. Both these teams went to the NCAA tournament last year. Uh, obviously, big regional games for us and for them. Um, but uh, Monticello returns everybody but one senior. Arkansas Tech lost a lot of seniors, but they brought a ton of transfers in. So we're not sure, uh, you know, how Arkansas Tech is going to be. We'll be able to scout them uh, when we when we get done playing that first night. But Monticello is going to be a, a great challenge for us. Um, but what a better way to tip off. And, and, and now we can gauge it because obviously it's not the Gophers where, you know, where you're playing at a higher level. So I think I just really want to see where we stack up this weekend. And I know these guys are looking forward to that challenge. And certainly you're going to learn a lot after this weekend, but any area that stands out now that you'll, you'll kind of want to see the team really develop and improve upon before you get into these conferences? Well, games? these guys know ever since I've been here, man, I harp on our defense. I'm, I'm a big defensive guy, and uh, that's something that we got to continue to improve on along with our rebounding, transition, things of that nature. But I feel like this year's team can score the ball better than, than it was a year ago. we got a ton of different guys that can put the ball in the basket. Uh, our unselfishness is incredible. I mean, we, we, uh, there's times in practice that uh, I got to tell guys to take a shot, you know, instead of passing the ball. And so that's, that's been a positive. All right. Well, thank you both for being here today and uh, good luck this season. Thanks. Appreciate it. Joey James and Avon Ward as the men's basketball team gets ready to start things here this weekend. And of course, uh, as we said with the women's team, full schedule available, CSPBears.com. And We'll have the webcasts for all of those games. You can watch those through the same portal there on the website. But I want to thank all of our guests for joining the show here this month. And uh, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back again at some point in December, early on in the month, uh, with another edition of the show. But uh, thank you so much for being here this month. This has been Golden Bear Insider.